this video is going to tell you, let me take this hat off, it's summertime. I know you've clicked on this during the winter because you're like, wow, winter pipes have burst outside. Well, actually, it's what is it, April? End of April here at the moment? That's why I thought I'd record this video now because why wait until it's freezing cold? So we've got a burst pipe here. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, effectively a burst pipe. So what I'm going to show you is firstly what to do to fix this and then how to prevent your pipes from bursting ever again. All right, so let's get on with it. You're going to learn a lot in this video and remember to hold tight. Mwah. So the first thing you should do is get in control of the situation. You've got water coming out because what's happened is the pipe is frozen. When water freezes, it expands, or actually it's the point at which it goes from being a liquid to a solid. It's actually the point of expansion. And that is what will rupture a copper pipe or other types of pipe that aren't designed to be going outside and being frozen. So the first thing you need to do is actually just turn the water off, get control of the situation. For our demonstration here, as you can see, I'm gonna trace my hose all the way back here to the tap and turn it off. Oh wow, look, suddenly, you know, calm down now, everything's gonna be okay, don't worry. If you've ever heard of a Jubilee clip, a Jubilee clip looks like this. What you could do, if you don't know how to do any sort of basic plumbing, is you could get a small piece of rubber. Uh, it could be, I don't know, a bike inner tube or something rubber. Anything you can think of that's rubber? Condoms, use condoms. And then you could wrap that around there Maybe don't use condoms, they're probably not great for that. They're protective in other ways. But um, you could wrap it around there and then you could use a Jubilee clip to tighten up around there and then effectively do a temporary fix before you get a plumber around to fix it. So if that's what you could do right now, I've done it in previous videos. Here's a picture of what it looks like when it's done. And it does work, but it's only temporary. If you know what to do, you can now do a very quick fix on this pipe here. And I'm gonna do it now with the tools that you can get from Amazon on our Amazon store. Oh baby. One thing I wanna say as well guys, the people at our locals have seen the outtakes of this video and they've also seen random shots on my mobile phone of random stuff like this uh, because they're members of our locals chat group. Links below, it's absolutely brilliant. It's basically a whole community where you can share photos and videos of your own work, look at people's work as well, but also get loads of behind the scenes and extra content from the world of plumber parts right to your phone. What you need to do is ascertain where the leak is. Now, usually on splits in pipe, the splits are actually about an inch long usually, and you're looking to then cut out two sections of pipe like so, then put two couplings in and then join it through. Sometimes you'll be really lucky and have a pinhole type failure, like what we've got here, which I certainly didn't drill. And the good thing about that is you can actually cut straight over the piece that's failed. So you can line up your cutters to go straight on the middle of it like that, and then cut straight through it. I mean, imagine the days when it was, when you didn't have pipe slices to cut pipes. Imagine what it must have been like having to use a hacksaw for everything, or one of those twiddly up ones. Kids of today don't know how good they've got it. I don't really know, do they? There's two ways you can now affect a fix. You could put on a straight coupling on this here um, in a compression and just do it up either side, but we're gonna put on a solder one on here. So we're gonna make sure there's no water left in the pipe at all. And you will be able to do this, even if the pipe is properly fixed in a situation, you should be able to put some weight on the pipe and get that water to come out. If you struggle to get the water out, sometimes you just put your finger on the end it'll actually coax it to come out on your finger via some sort of form of godlike convection. Always clean the pipe that you're about to work on. Make sure you get this, or you can use one of these lovely little beasts. Actually, the one I've got on here at the moment is for 22 mil. My uh, 15 mil one of these has gone, but as you can see, it's got some nice teeth in there that can clean up the end of these pipes nicely. Do this side here at this end. Make sure it's lovely and clean. Right, of course, flux your pipe using the fluctuator. All these tools can be used and bought in our Amazon store, links below. And actually, if you've bought all the tools you need, it helps me a great deal if you just use our Amazon store link to buy anything you like. The more expensive, the better, because I get a tiny bit of commission out of it, and then I get to spend it on things that Emily wants. Straight coupling, always got one of these in my pocket. Put that on there, like so. And then you'd have to flex it and bend it real hard, try and get that flex and then get that in. And if you want to make sure it's in properly, you could draw a bit of pen on there or whatever. Bit of fire, and then we're going to solder this up. Lovely. I don't care if it doesn't look absolutely amazing. I just care that it doesn't leak. 
that's the first priority in my, like, my world. Once you've got that like that, just give it a little bit of a clean down. So the next thing you've got to think about is it's frozen. You fixed the leak now. Um, sometimes you might go, well, hell, why did it freeze? It had insulation all around it. Well, it doesn't matter if you've got it insulated outside. Sometimes if the weather is below freezing for a long amount of time, it is going to beat that insulation. So we need to think of an electrical way of keeping the pipe warm when it's below freezing. So let me introduce you to this fantastic product that you can get on our Amazon store below. I've not been paid to do this video. I'm just doing it because it's the right thing for you to do to stop your pipes from bursting. So let me introduce you to Trace Heating. That's not its name. It's not called Tracy. It's just called Trace Heating because it traces along the pipe, all right? We've got this sort of thick cable here that gets nice and gently warm um, when this little thermostat goes below about five degrees. So that's the great thing about it. It's not on constantly or all the time or anything like that. At one end as well, on the inside of the house, we've got a little reset and a trip for that as well. Then a little connecting blocks as well that will be inside the house. And then after that, I've just got to wire it up to a plug. Now, one thing I would say is that some people would probably prefer to install this fully and properly by drilling a hole through the wall into the house or into the property. But one thing you could do is think, well, it's getting cold now. Um, I'll run an extension lead out and plug this in and make sure this is all watertight under a bucket or something like that. Cha-ching! Safe, isn't it? It's gotta be. Spitfire. Anyway, uh, so what you do, you want to make sure as the first part of the install that your trace heating wire has got a really good touch on the pipe that you're trying to stop from freezing all the time. And what usually you'll get in trace heating stuff is some tie wraps and then you can tie wrap this on and let, just do one every sort of foot or whatever, just making sure that it gets a nice touch on that pipe. If you want to get one that's at five meters or 10 meters or whatever, they come in different lengths, just check, check the shop listing, but I need to do that at the end of the video after you've joined our locals as well. And if you had joined our locals, you never know, you might have found out some extra stuff about this. And so on. I think you get the idea. You're gonna get this that's so got a nice adhesion to that there, all right? It's currently, what, about 18 degrees out here, Max? About 18 degrees. My favorite age. So it shouldn't be coming on. And in a minute, I'll get my thermal camera out and you'll be able to see that it's not on at the moment. Want that feeling of strength and reliability in your boiler, but don't know how to afford it or budget for it, then look no further than Warmzilla. Warmzilla will allow you to finance your boiler options and buying options throughout the year, so you never have to worry about getting all that money together. Now these are hard when you go down like this, because then you've got to go back again. Oh baby, we're getting some big old pull-ups today, aren't we? Should we go close on, just for the hell of it? Ooh. Is swinging like a gorilla or a warmzilla. <laughs> anyway, so once you've done that, you know that you'll be able to afford whatever boiler you need to heat your home. The other thing they do though is home protection as well. So if you have things like leaks, stuff like that, they will be able to help you out. So there you go. Now you know. Oh, now you know what warmzilla can do. Five kilos. It's one of Emily's ones. Check them out. Links below. They are helping the channel loads at the moment, and I think they're absolutely class especially when I go to loads of people's houses where they've put money aside for their new car and all the rest of it, but when the boiler goes wrong, they've never thought about it. And that's when Warmzella is there for you. We're gonna have to take all this off again, you know, to make it frozen in a minute, but we might as well just show it. So this piece here, the piece that you want to get an accurate reading of outside, that wants to go on here, all right? And then everything else that needs to be out of the weather is onwards from there, all right? I did a video actually using this exact product to show you how to protect your condense from leaking as well, or your condense from freezing on your boiler, which can be a very bad thing to happen. Um, and it's exactly the same thing. You've got a condense pipe, you pop this on there. What a lot of people do is when their condense freezes, the boiler goes wrong, they've got no heating. They're told to pour boiling hot water, not warm water on the condense, and it ends in tragedy. Right, so now I'm just gonna quickly pop a plug on here and get this powered up. Right, so we've plugged this in. This is inside the house. <laughs> get that in your head. 
I'm just trying to sort of give you the, the whole premise that you don't have to keep having pipes going wrong and breaking and things like that. Reset, do a test like that. So that's holding, that's testing, that's holding, yeah? So we're all good there. Now, I'll get my thermal camera out and we're gonna to prove to you, because I could hold this all day long and say, oh yeah, it's not coming on, but you know, let's get the thermal camera out and prove it. Right, so just look on here now. So look, there's nothing there that's ridiculously hot at the moment. And that is because out here right at the moment, it is not freezing at all, okay? Fortunately though, I've got a chest freezer just through there. So we're gonna shove this in the chest freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes, whip it out real quick, and then hopefully it would have cut in by then and I'll be able to show you this heating up. Into my lovely clean shed. Max, watch yourself on that, mate. Should I put the whole lot in there? Yeah. Oh, well. Let's wait, what, 15 minutes? Right, okay, it's a few minutes later. <laughs> Good luck, it getting nice and dark in here, Max. Right, we got to be quick getting this out so it doesn't warm up too quickly. Let's put a hat over it. Hat with bits of metal in it. I do all my metal work in here on my other YouTube channel. Signs of James. Right, here we go. That is cold. Right, we'll plug it in right now, as soon as we can. So you get a little light on here that says operating. So that's operating now. Right, I just want you guys to see this getting warm. This wire now should be getting a bit, there you go. See that? It's cold at the bottom, already at the top. It's getting warmer and warmer down here. So you pop this on there, remember like I said, so everything gets nice and warm. So it's touching the pipe that you're trying to stop freezing. Chop off all your tails. So there you go, so that's getting lovely and warm now. You can't really see it very well here on the screen, but it's getting warm and that's keeping that pipe warm. So what you could do is leave it like this if you wanted, which would be pretty stupid, wouldn't it? What you want to do once you've done this install is put insulation around it, but you're not going to use this type of insulation if it's outside. This is for demonstration purposes only, YouTubers and the people of YouTube. This is 22 mil for a 15 mil pipe because then it can take the actual hit trace heating wire down it as well. So then what you do is you pop this on there like so, and then you pop that on here. And I want you to see if you see that end on, you'll see how this works. Then after that, you could tie wrap this up and make that nice. And this is what you do all the way down the pipe to stop it from freezing, to keep that heat in when this does cut in. You pop that around there. And there you go. If you did that all the way down here, this would only ever cut on when you needed it to. And this pipe, once you'd fixed it, would never freeze again. So the reason I say don't use this particular type of insulation is not because it's bad insulation or anything like that, it's because it's not UV resistant and you'll need to get an insulation. I think this is Climaflex, I think about Armaflex, something like that. They make the UV resistant stuff. It's more expensive, but it is really good. I actually think it's probably got better insulating properties, but that's what you need. This is for demonstration purposes. If you left this out in the sun, eventually it would degrade to the point where you could just rub it off with your finger. But look, lovely little job. Let's get these all cut off. Never gonna freeze again. Never gonna freeze again. If you need any more help on basic plumbing stuff, especially on how to fix pinhole leaks, because there's loads of different ways, including some of the ones that I showed you here earlier on, click on this video here. It's a great video. And of course, subscribe and join my locals, or I might put a photo up of my bum.